Right, well this isn't the first time I've seen one of these AJS 250 engines from pre-World War II in bits and uh, I did quite a lot of work on a certain AJS 250 over quite a number of years until fairly recently but this one's nothing to do with that, this one's got a different owner and he's given me the bare bones of an engine plus lots of spares that would almost make up another one and it's my job to check through them and uh, try and put at least one good working engine together out of everything that's present so um, this this morning was what looked like a more or less complete engine and I've dismantled it and there are various things missing including the main bearings from uh, the drive side crankcase and um, there's a lot of spares came with it that I've yet to sort through and look through and see what's there but uh, I thought I'd start with the crankshaft and um, the big end feels good it feels nice and smooth and uh, probably is all right but probably isn't necessarily uh, a guarantee so I spoke to the owner and I said you know do you want me to split the crank and have a look at the big end and inspect the crank pin and the rollers and he wanted that so here it is before I split it and I've just got it in the lathe between centers with the dial gauges on it reading in thousandths of an inch just as a sort of reference or starting point basically and we can see that gauge there is showing a run out of two thousandths of an inch this one is showing I would say that's three thousandths of an inch they're not rising and falling exactly together either so um, I can't really say that one cancels the other out to uh, a great degree they're not too far out of step but then they look like they're sort of fairly close but if you look at the rotation of the crank the gauge on my right is on its high reading at, with the crank pin up at the top and it goes low as it goes around the bottom whereas the one on the left gives its high reading at mid stroke actually and it's low reading at the other mid stroke so that may well be fine I just want to use this as a reference and hopefully if I can after I've split it and inspected it if it's all good in there and I can just put it back together to get readings that match those or preferably a little better if I can so we'll see what happens there I see there's also um, some vice marks on the rims of the flywheels there which all oh, right and uh, looks like that one's had a bit of a hammering as well that's not the end of the world I'd rather see vice marks there than vice marks on the edges um, I'll split them next have a look what's in there and all being well um, I might just be able to put them straight back together and true them and that will be the foundations of a good engine if it needs any replacement big end parts well um, we'll have to source them and uh, fit them but next job is to split the crank and have a look what's in there right I've got that uh, crankshaft split now for the AJS 250 engine and I've had a look at the crank pin and as we can hopefully see that's all in good order there's no scoring or pitting or wear to speak of so that's good the rollers are all in good shape and also the outer race in the conrod is also in very good condition so i know that i can put that back together now and we really have got a good big end there so that'll be my next job put it all back together and through it again and then hopefully with that sorted we'll have a good basis to start building a good engine up with there we are I've got that little AJS 250 crank back together now and um, got it all set up to check the run out and it's changed in that I've got both clocks rising and falling together now um, and it'll be the highs and lows are between top and bottom dead center not at mid stroke so um, 
there really isn't much I can gain beyond this but this is what we've got on that side we've got a rise and fall of one thousandth of an inch hopefully we can see that and on this side we've got a rise and fall of four thousandths of an inch they're rising and falling together which before they weren't doing that and if you cancel them out that gives us an actual run out of three thousandth of an inch there on the uh, timing side shaft in this case as it's set up between the centers and that will be shared between the two shafts when they're in the main bearings and like I say if we look at it you can see that both gauges read their high spots with the crank pin in the top dead center position and they both go to their low readings going around bottom dead center so there really isn't a lot I can do about that flywheels are running uh, nice and true they're not sort of the gaps not opening and closing between them as I spin them there's no visible rise and fall either together or against one another so I'm pretty sure that this will work out okay and will actually be possibly marginally better than it was before because um, the overall run out is about the same as it was before but at least they're at extreme top and extreme bottom dead centers and in the same directions now which they weren't exactly before even though we had the same sort of amount so it's a bit of an improvement I would say and uh, that's ready to go back in the crankcases once I've sorted out the main bearing situation.